a, uh, <coughs> one of the uh, features of open source software is that I can't see my screen and that screen at the same time. So. <laughs> Um, part of what I want to say really I think addresses an issue that was raised in the question before, which is how do you write legislation to cover auditing? And I, I, I think if the principle that, that might work, and I've you know, never tried to write legislation, so I really have no idea, is not to legislate a method, but to legislate properties of method. You want a method that is going to accomplish a certain goal. And then if somebody can come up with a better method the next year than the one that exists this year, that's great, that can be used. But you somehow want to prove that your method has a certain property. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about how to get to the next page. Um, all right, so what's this about? We want to use machines or, or voting systems. When I say machine, I really mean the whole, the whole complicated mechanisms by which we go about tallying votes, including things that are getting uh, counted at the, the county level that are combining things at the precinct level, so forth and so on. So the machine here is in inverted commas. Um, we want to use machines to count votes because it saves time and money. The problem is that they don't do a perfect job. There's a variety of different kinds of mistakes that can be made. We'd like to be able to detect these mistakes, have quality improvements, so forth and so on. We know there's going to be some. One important question is, is there enough to throw the outcome of the election? <clears throat> so. There, there's a risk, if you count by machines, that, that there's enough error that the wrong person is named the winner. Right. What's the point of a statistical audit? A statistical audit lets you limit that risk and quantify that risk. <clears throat> so one property that one might like to put into some legislation is the following. That if you certify the election, you know that either you named the right winner or something really unlikely happened. So that are a rare event. So for example, one in 100 would correspond to 99% confidence. Could be you know, one in 20, whatever, whatever the legislators think is an appropriate number. But this is the essential property that I think we want an auditing method to have. And we want that to be, to be the case even if the voting system has hardware software bugs. We want this software independence. <clears throat> now, in order for that to happen, it's absolutely essential that you select the precincts to be audited at random. And there are different methods for doing that, which I'm not going to talk about. But these kind of quantification of risk really does require that we select the precincts at random. So the methods that I've seen in, uh, in legislation and, and proposed otherwise aren't complete in the sense that or there, there, there's minor, there's some exceptions to this, but as a general rule, you don't really have a complete principle, you don't have a complete recipe for how to audit an election unless you start off by saying how, how many precincts to look at at first, and then Having seen the error in those precincts, whatever miscount turns up, do I certify or do I not? Do I count more? At what point do I make the decision to certify? And most of the legislation that I've seen doesn't do anything with the outcome of the audit. It just says you look this hard and then you're done. <clears throat> so the crucial thing is eventually to be able to make a decision whether to certify the election or continue to a full recount. Um, and if, if you do this, you can, you can do it in such a way to ensure that the chance of certifying the wrong person um, is at most 1%. For example, 1% is, you know, is, a, is a placeholder here. So how big does this statistical audit have to be in order to guarantee that the chance that, that uh, you certify the wrong person is at most 1%? <clears throat> That's going to depend on the contest, right? It depends on... The, the, the desired level of confidence that you have, which you might want to apply different levels of confidence from races depending on how big or how small they are. Um, the risks are, in some sense, different. It depends on the margin of the contest. Generally, the smaller the margin, the larger the number of precincts you're going to have to look at will be. It's going to depend on the number of precincts in the contest and the number of ballots in each precinct, including the invalid ballots and the undervotes. Those are potentially sources of error. Somebody could, I mean, a, a legitimate vote could be miscounted as an undervote or an overvote. That's a possibility. You need to take that into account. It's going to depend on the discrepancies the audit finds. And generally, the legislation has, has ignored this, <clears throat> although Minnesota is, is an exception. But, but as Victor mentioned, it, it doesn't quite do the desired thing. Um, and it also might depend on assumptions about the maximum possible miscount that any precinct can hold. 
And methods like SAFE assume that, uh, for example, at most 20% of the ballots in any precinct could have been miscounted. If more than that had been miscounted, it would trigger some kind of a challenge. Um, and you can dispense with that assumption, but you end up being a larger sample. Right, so a point that's been made many times today already is that no flat percentage shy of 100% is going to suffice for every, for every election. So here are some important principles to keep in mind. So first of all, if the sample is too small, then it can be very likely that your sample won't contain any miscount whatsoever, even if in the aggregate there's enough to blow the election. So you need a big enough sample. If you don't look, you won't see. <clears throat> uh, if the sample is big enough, then you're quite likely to see large discrepancies in the sample if, in the aggregate, there's enough miscount to cause the wrong person to have been declared uh, the apparent winner. Small as the sample, the lower the confidence. The larger the discrepancies you see in the sample, the lower your confidence. So here's just a, a sketch of an approach that um, I have an algorithm that does this. If any of the registrars of voters are interested in trying it, they're not coming election. But here's, here's the basic idea. You, you, take a, you take a sample, you audit it, you look at the discrepancies. If the discrepancies that you see are so small that it's incredibly likely you would have seen much more than that, would have seen more than that, if the outcome were wrong, you can stop, you can certify. You know that either uh, the election came off the right way or something very, very rare happened. If you don't, if, if that probability is not really large, then you need to keep counting. You need to look at more samples. And that probability could be small either because your sample size is too small or because the miscount that you see in the sample is large. So with this approach, you're, you're guaranteed that if you certify the election, either you name the right winner or something very rare occurred. Thank you, everyone.